This 4th of July weekend, it is your patriotic duty to get into the used furniture superstore and adoption center for deals that'll leave your neighbors red, white, and blue in the face. This weekend's combo deal is a national treasure. You get in here and adopt one child, and we will send you home with one free copy of the European thrill ride, The Surge 2. Now, you may be wondering, what does a European video game have to do with America? Remember, patriots, America is a melting pot of many nations, including Europe land. The Surge 2 is a great way to spend your weekend. Staying inside and playing video games with the child you just adopted? I can't think of anything better to do on a 4th of July weekend. Dude, I know it sounds stupid, but we gotta move this stock of games, okay? You, our store is in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest. You have to drive 30 minutes just to think about coming here, okay? Just let me film this train wreck and move these stupid games. You'd have to be a communist not to come in here and take advantage of this deal. We're practically paying you to come to us. That's the used furniture superstore and adoption center right off of exit 257 on route 739. Make sure you show your true colors and get in here this 4th of July weekend where we shoot on sight, child or not. I get paid enough to embarrass myself here on a weekly basis. Of all the popular Souls-like games that have come out in the last five years, The Surge is definitely the one with the most potential. With combat mechanics that were wholly unique to this game, and a setting that is surprisingly not medieval like most Souls-like games, and frankly just much better gameplay than Lords of the Fallen, uh, I think it's no surprise that it got a sequel. And that sequel is what we're going to be talking about on this episode of Eurojank Theater. Releasing just two and a half years after the first game, they must have sprinkled some magic fairy dust on this thing because uh, they improved on the first game in almost every single feasible way. Let's briefly discuss the release and development of this game. Should be pretty quick. I couldn't find any specific quote that said when the game began development, but considering how quickly it came out after the first Surge, I'd be surprised if they weren't already working on the Surge 2 before the first one released. That They may have had that much faith in it. Some special care and consideration was taken uh, with this game's level design, uh, because in the first game a lot of people had a lot of issues with how confusing and samey and repetitive all the, you know, factory hallways and stuff that the first game took place in were. It was really easy to get lost and just walk around in circles, even after you've been in an area for a couple hours. Found that little tidbit on a Reddit AMA. At launch, and specifically on consoles, there were some serious performance issues in some of the more densely packed areas, like the wildlife preserve area you go to, because there's foliage and enemies and kind of like a little bit too much going on for it to handle, so PS4 and Xbox One had a little bit of trouble with this area. Frame rates would tank pretty hard, and that made combat in this area kind of a nightmare. Now I'm playing the game well after launch and on PC, so I didn't have any of this these these issues. Now I'm assuming that these performance issues were part of the reason that this game didn't get better review scores when it came out because if you look at the review scores even on like Metacritic the scores for the first game and the second game are almost exactly the same and I think that's insanity because this game is much better than the first game. Let's let's move on to the the story of this story. The first game asked a question, and that question was, what if we created nanomachines and we gave them artificial intelligence and they smartened up and realized that humans are the problem? Uh, the second game asked the question, what if I fought God? Kind of. After the events of the first game, the Utopia rocket shoots up into the sky, and before it can actually hit the atmosphere, it hits an airplane. You are on this plane with Jonah Gutenberg's granddaughter, and he's the CEO of Creo, the company responsible for the nanites. The plane crashes, and you wake up two months later in a prison hospital. The prison is attacked by a giant nanite monster called the Delver. Uh, it, it blows a big hole in the building, and everybody in the prison escapes, 
including you. Weird thing I need to mention, uh, when you wake up in the game, you've got these defibrillator gauntlets already strapped to your hands. Like someone put these on you in the hospital bed thinking that you would need this at some point. I don't know if they could see the future or something, but I'm glad they did. I'm not unappreciative. It's just funny that you wake up ready to go. I don't really want to get too into the story. It's crazy. And I just left out 99% of the story, but really you should give it a try. Back to your character. So you're a nameless guy in this game, right? You're not Warren anymore. Warren is in this game. He's actually more interesting in this game than he was in the first game. And frankly, he could have been more interesting, but the only character development you got from Warren in the first game was he's in a wheelchair, now he's not, and here's uh, 20 hours of gameplay. Okay, see ya. That's all the story we got with Warren. So the fact that you're a nameless nobody and you don't really get a story in this, it, it's, it still works just fine, just like any Souls game. You're just nobody. You're some guy. The area that the game takes place in, Jericho City, is way better than the Creo facility from the first game. The, the first game, you were basically just in a factory the whole game, and it got really boring after a while. There were some unique areas, but they were just different parts of a big factory. Now you're going to all these like crazy nightclubs and gross musty like dock areas and wildlife preserves and it's it's cool. There's a lot of varied areas in this game and they're fun to explore and get lost in. So I, I appreciate the direction they went in with this game. Speaking of things that are much better in this game, let's talk about the gameplay. So like I said, Everything is better from the first game. The proficiency levels are gone, so you don't have to level up your proficiency with a type of weapon to be good at using it. You can just use every type of weapon, and it's fine. The upgrade tree for weapons is very linear. You just need materials to upgrade your weapons. You get the materials from cutting limbs and armor off of enemies as you go through the game. It's very simple. It's, it's not overly fussy or confusing. It's great. I love it. The weapons in this game all actually feel more viable than they did in the first game. In the first game, uh, staffs were just like way better than everything else. And in this game, I feel like every type of weapon is fun and usable in its own way. I, I found myself constantly flipping to a different weapon as I'd pick up something that's, you know, a little stronger, a little faster, or did some status effect or something. I was constantly changing out my weapon for something new. In the first game, I used the same weapon for basically the whole game, and that sucks. That does not happen in this game. It's much more balanced. The drone has been improved upon. It doesn't use energy like it did in the first game, it actually uses ammo and there's different kinds of ammo so you can have it shoot regular bullets you can turn into a machine gun a sniper rifle it can shoot grenades molotov cocktails it can stun enemies it does all kinds of stuff it's so 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 much better than it was in the first game the enemy variety is fairly decent there's a lot of human enemies in this game but a lot of them have different move sets some of them are like way faster and flippy and hard to get a hold of uh, a lot of the bosses Bosses in this game are more fun than they were in the first game. First of all, there's way more of them. There was only five in the first game, and I don't know how many are in this one, but it's more than ten. A lot of them are cool or just simply fine, and a handful of them are actually pretty awesome. The first boss in particular has these gas tanks all over his body and all these big long limbs. It's the big robot you see on the cover of the game. Instead of just attacking him until he falls down, you're supposed to destroy these tanks to increase his heat gauge, and that is eventually what defeats him. It's a lot more fun and engaging than just whacking him until he falls down. Felt like they took some tips from Demon Souls, because Demon Souls has a lot of bosses like that with unique gimmicks that make the fights fun, albeit challenging. Unfortunately, spoilers, the final boss is not like that. You whack him until he falls down, and that's a big ol' bummer. But that's only one boss. The final boss. Yeah, it sucks. The most difficult boss in the game actually is the camera. And no, this doesn't happen in all areas, but particularly in the wildlife preserve, 
there are some areas where that camera would just stay right where it was, not move, and just trap you in little corners because there was more than one enemy and you couldn't dodge around them, you couldn't run past them, you couldn't jump over them. They just pin you in there and wail on you until you die. And that was a problem in some areas. Not all of them, but in the areas that it was a problem, it was a big problem. This game does some ha <coughs> This game has a unique mechanic in the revenge enemies. And what the revenge enemies are, are enemies that killed another player in their game. So, you'll get a notification that a revenge enemy has appeared, and one of the regular enemies in your world turns into a revenge enemy. And they're, I think, a little bit stronger, or maybe have a little bit more health, but they give you a bit of a bonus reward, and it sends materials to that player, so they get a little something when you beat their revenge enemy, which is pretty cool. This game also has like spray paint signs you can put down that other players can see, much like messages in Dark Souls and Elden Ring, um, but you can only use pictures, so people have to decipher what you mean from your pictures. Most of the time it's, you know, obvious stuff like there's an enemy around the corner, so they put an arrow and a skull or something like that. It's nice addition. I don't think it's as cool as the revenge enemies, but it's nice. Something else that's big in this game that I appreciate is that the platforming, although not great, is better than it was in the first game. And this game has a lot of places with little secrets that you need to, you know, jump over a pit to grab something. And in this game, I feel much more confident about being able to, you know, jump over small pits than I did in the first game. Overall, really, the, the controls are just much tighter. I think in the first game, they were really going for that, you know, feeling like you've got a forklift strapped to your body kind of thing. Everything was very weighty and heavy and slow, and all the enemies were really fast. It feels evened out in this game. You feel as fast as the enemies do, and that's really great because it was really annoying in the first game. <laughs> Honestly, if I can make a true recommendation out there to those of you who perhaps have not played either game, um, I would say just play this one. Really, I, you could probably skip the first surge and go right to this one. You're really not missing much on the story, and this game plays a lot like the first one, but just better in all regards, really and truly it is. It's just better. I'm sure there will be some Surge 1 purists out there that tell me that I'm wrong and you know, you've gotta play the first game, what are you talking about? But really, I don't think you do. I think once you play the Surge 2 and you enjoy it, you might go, mm, I'll play the Surge 1. And you'll play it for an hour and go, wow, this is not as good and you'll probably stop playing it. The weapon pool in this game is really fun. I was constantly trying new stuff, like I said before, new weapons, new armors, and always trying out new you know, combos and stuff that I wasn't trying before, trying to mix my drone into combat more efficiently and you know, use them to my advantage. And it's, it's just fun to really, really get good at this game. And you, you get to the point where you know nothing scares you anymore. And every fight you're just like, yeah, come on, come on, fight me. That's what I do in real life. I just walk up to people in the grocery store and it's... No, I don't. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as it really helps the channel a whole lot. Make sure you go over to my Twitch account at twitch.tv slash resetget. Follow me there so you can watch when I stream the games that I talk about in these videos. I don't stream every minute of gameplay, but I do try to stream each game at least once or twice. And after that, check out my Redbubble, which will be in the description down below. Um, don't make a whole lot of money off Redbubble. Not sure if you've seen the margins. Uh, they're uh, terrible. But uh, I came up with a handful of designs. Really screech up. My stomach is making all kinds of weird noises. I made a handful of designs that some of you guys might like. They're just goofy little things you can throw on your notebook or water bottle or whatever. If you want to support the channel, go for it. I am not gonna beg or plead for you guys to do it because I know Redbubble's sticker quality is not fantastic. However, at some point I plan on investing in a machine so that I can print my own stickers and ship them to you guys. Maybe even do some shirts, who knows. I don't have a whole lot of extra money slash time, but if we get to that point, don't worry, I will keep you informed. For now, check out my Redbubble, maybe buy some stuff. I don't care, unless you buy them.
then I care and I appreciate it. And make sure you tune in for the next video where I talk about... Well, I haven't decided yet, but it's either gonna be the Outriders expansion or Halo Infinite. Not sure which one I should do first. I feel like Outriders is gonna fall out of relevancy a lot faster than Halo Infinite, but we shall see. Stay tuned.